Welcome to Sparks. Hi Sparkies, it's Mr. Gary and I am so grateful that you're joining me this week. This week, Mr. Craig is back with us and it ha his lesson has something to do with climbing trees. I'm not sure what all that's about. You might, but I'm just not quite sure. Well, hey, here's the deal though. If you don't have your Bible and your handbook with you, now would be the time to stop this video or pause it, run and grab your Bible and your handbook, and then run back and hit the play button and join back in. All right, well, it's time for our opening now, and so I want everybody on your feet, everybody on your feet, and we are gonna start with our Pledge of Allegiance, so right hands over our hearts, and let's begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, remain standing for the pledge to the Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. All right, it's time for our theme song. I want to hear everybody singing loud and proud. All right, well, it is time for the books of the Bible song, so I hope you're still on your feet. And if you're not, get up on your feet, and I want to hear you singing all 66 books of the Bible. Here we go. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah. Good job, boys and girls. Well, it is almost time for our lesson, but first we need to pray, so I need you to get into an attitude of prayer. So let's clasp our hands, close our eyes, and bow our heads. Dear God, I thank you for all my friends who are joining me this week, 
And I pray that as we dive into this lesson in your word, that you would open our eyes, ears, hearts, and minds, and to help us understand what we're going to be learning, but just as importantly, how to use it in our lives. I thank you for Mr. Craig and his willingness to bring us this lesson. And I just pray that you will bless him and bless all my Sparkies as we learn from your word today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Sparkies. Well, it's time to join in with Mr. Craig. And I hope he's not in a tree, but I'm not sure what's going on. But anyway, Mr. Craig, take it away. Hello, Sparkies. It's Mr. Craig, and I am excited to be back here bringing you another amazing lesson for Sparks. I'm really excited this week because to teach my lesson, I have decided to use all my little buddies here. You know, and I, I like it when I'm able to actually get my little buddies out and, you know, play pretend and have little fun situations with them. So let's go ahead and get started. This week, we are going to be learning about Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus was somebody who climbed up in a tree. Exciting, huh? Have you ever climbed up in a tree? It's pretty fun, isn't it? I remember when I was younger, I would climb up into a tree, try to see how high I could get. And boy, when you're up there, you could just see forever, couldn't you? It was so much fun. Well, Zacchaeus climbed up in a tree for a specific reason, and we are going to learn about that right now. But before we learn about why he did it, why don't we find out who Zacchaeus was? Zacchaeus was a tax collector. Ooh, that was not a very good thing to be back in the days of Jesus. I don't know if you remember the lesson from last week with Miss Donna, but she talked about another tax collector by the name of Matthew. Well, Zacchaeus was actually a boss tax collector, which meant he actually had other tax collectors working under him. And to show you why these tax collectors were not liked, let me show you what he would do. So the king would come up to him or the government and say, Zacchaeus, I need you to go out and get me a piece of candy from this person over there. And Zacchaeus would be like, eh, okay, I'll go get that piece of candy for you. And so he would come up to the guy and be like, Hey, you, I have been told that I need to get two pieces of candy from you. What? I thought I only had to pay you one piece of candy. No, you have to pay me two pieces of candy. Oh, I guess. So he would give Zacchaeus two pieces of candy. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> and Zacchaeus would take the candy back to the king. And he would say, here you go, king. Here's that one piece of candy that you wanted. Thank you, Zacchaeus. And then the Zacchaeus would be like, ha ha, I paid the king his one piece of candy, and that means I get to keep this one piece of candy for myself. And so, as you can see, Zacchaeus was very dishonest. And the people knew that. You know, the guy would be like, I can't believe that guy just robbed from me. I'm going to go tell the king. But the problem is, king, that Zacchaeus actually took two pieces of candy from me instead of the one that you asked for. Well, you know what? The king didn't care. In fact, the king, more often than not, would just throw the complainer in jail. You know, as long as the government or the king got his money, he really did not care if Zacchaeus took extra money than that. <laughs> so that meant that every time Zacchaeus went out to collect taxes. He not only collected what he needed for his own job, but he also took extra from himself, which meant he was actually stealing from the people because he was greedy and he was dishonest. Okay. And so by doing that, he actually became a very rich man. And as you can see, you know, he's got a nice, nice hat on, a nice suit. He's even got a monocle, which shows that you're rich. But just because he was rich does not mean that he had a great life. In fact, nobody liked him. You know, the king, he really didn't like him because he knew he was a dishonest man. The people didn't like him because he kept stealing from him. You know, even though he was rich, 
he was actually a very, you know, very bad person, very sad person probably. Well, it just so happens that one day Zacchaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was going to be coming to town. And we don't actually know what Zacchaeus knew about Jesus. I mean, he definitely would have heard about him because Jesus had been going from town to town. He'd been performing miracles. He'd been preaching. You know, people would have been saying, no, this is the son of God. This is the promised Messiah. Look at all these miracles he's doing. So we don't know exactly what Zacchaeus knew about Jesus or what he felt about him. But if nothing else, I'm pretty sure he was curious about who Jesus was. So when the day came that Jesus was coming, Zacchaeus rushed as fast as he could to the roadside to be able to see Jesus. The problem is when he got there, there was already people there. And you know what? He couldn't get past them. And so, you know, Zacchaeus was actually kind of a shorter guy, so he couldn't see over them. And, you know, these two here, they knew how bad Zacchaeus had been. They knew how dishonest he was. So he wasn't, they weren't going to let him pass. You know, they weren't going to let him through to be able to see Jesus. So what Zacchaeus did instead was he climbed up in what was a, called a sycamore tree. Now, a sycamore tree looks different than this kind of tree. A sycamore tree had branches that just went out everywhere. So it was very easy for Zacchaeus to be able to climb up there. So he climbs up, he gets to the top, and he's waiting for Jesus. And then here comes Jesus. And Jesus is walking down the street. He's saying hi to everybody. Hi, how you doing? Hi, how you doing? And then he stops and he's like, Zacchaeus, you need to come down from that tree because I am going to go and stay in your house today. And when Jesus said that, all the people that were around got this shocked look on their face. I mean, this was Jesus of Nazareth. This was supposed to be the Messiah. And what they heard him say was that he was going to go and stay in the house of a sinner like Zacchaeus, a dishonest and greedy man. They're all like, how could Jesus be doing that? Don't they know who this guy is? And in fact, Jesus did know who this guy was. But the thing that these guys did not realize is that not only was Zacchaeus a sinner, they were sinners as well. They didn't see that at the time because they only saw the bad stuff that Zacchaeus had doing. They didn't obviously take into account that they had done bad stuff in their lives as well, so they were also sinners. So not only did Jesus come for them, Jesus also came for somebody like Zacchaeus. Well, Zacchaeus heard, he came down very quickly and he's like, he couldn't, just couldn't believe what was going on. And after having met Jesus, you know what happened? Zacchaeus was an immediately changed man. He said right away to Jesus, he's like, you know what? I'm going to give away half of my stuff to the poor. I'm going to give half of my stuff away to other people. He goes, and if there has been people that I have taken advantage of or stolen from, like you know, this guy here or even this guy, he goes, not only am I going to pay them back what I stole, but I'm also going to pay them back four times as much. So, you know, not only did he give back, you know, the candy that he had stolen from them, but he just, you know, he gave away so much more. He gave it all back to them. That could not have happened without the power of God, the power of Jesus to take and transform this greedy and dishonest man into someone who was honest, someone who truly loved Jesus, and someone who was going to go out and be good to everybody else because he loved Jesus so much. Now remember, Zacchaeus was not a sinner just because he was a tax collector. You know, he could have done his job very honestly. He could have been a very good person. The reason he was a sinner was because he was dishonest and because he was greedy. Now, if you want to read all about Zacchaeus and all about what happened, what you need to do is you need to go to the book of Luke. Remember what Testament Luke is in? Is it the Old or New Testament? That's right. 
It's in the New Testament. So you go to the book of Luke, you go to chapter 19, and it's verses 1 through 10. And what is awesome is after Zacchaeus told Jesus everything he was going to do and showed how Jesus had transformed his life, Jesus said, and this is in Luke chapter 19, verses 9 and 10, he said, Today salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man, Jesus, has come to seek and save those who are lost. And just like Jesus came and saved Zacchaeus, he also came to save somebody like you and like me. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever been greedy? You know, have you ever, you know, taken more than what you should have? You know, have you ever, you know, grabbed the biggest and best piece of cake that you could? Or did you get angry if, you know, somebody else got that bigger piece of cake and you got a smaller one? Or did you ever get upset if somebody won a prize that, you know, you really wanted? Well, don't forget that that's greedy. And just like Zacchaeus, you know, his greediness got him in big trouble. But going back and being fair to people to whom you are unfair to, that is a good thing to do. And remember, it's much easier just to do it right the first time. You know, you don't need to be greedy. You don't always have to have the biggest piece. You don't always have to have, you know, to win the prize or anything like that. You know, we got to be fair. And have you ever been dishonest? Have you ever... You know, taking something that doesn't belong to you? Or have you ever lied to your parents? Or have you ever said something that wasn't true about somebody else? That's being dishonest. And remember, God wants us to be honest. And so just like Jesus was able to help Zacchaeus make the change from being dishonest to being honest, he's willing to help you do the same. And remember, it's never too late to turn to Jesus. You know, you may have been greedy and dishonest in the past, but that does not mean that you have to continue to be that way. That doesn't mean that Jesus doesn't still love you and that he doesn't still want you to be with him for all eternity. All right. So, Sparkies, I hope you had a great time this week. I know I had a great time presenting this story, and I know my guys here had a fun time bringing that story to you. Uh, Before we go, we're just going to say a quick prayer. So if you want to go ahead, bow your heads with me and put your hands together. Here we go. Dear Jesus, we love you very much. We are always excited uh, to have a brand new day here on earth to spread your love, to be nice to people, to be honest with people, and to, you know, just be that kind of person that you want us to be. We ask that you be with us now as we continue through this week. We ask that you help us learn our memory verses. We uh, just ask you to just, you know, love us and make us the best that we can be. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Sparkies, once again, work on those verses. Have a great week, and I will see you soon. And right now, back to Mr. Gary. What a great lesson, Mr. Craig. Well, boys and girls, it is time for you to do your part. And so I need you to get with your parents or your grandparents or whoever's helping you this week. And I need you to um, show your work in your handbook and recite your verses And then once you've got all that done satisfactorily, then they can go ahead and sign off on that and date it for you. All right. Well, that's all for this week's episode of Sparks. But until next week in another exciting adventure in God's Word, remember that Jesus loves you and so do we. See you right back here next week. Bye.